Neo ESA Europe Edition Review. Finally someone is on Tesla's level. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click the subscribe button at the bottom right, and subscribe to Growing Wealth and hit the bell icon, so you can get our videos in very first moments. Even your little help, will really work for us to grow. What most consumers, often fail to appreciate is that in a Tesla, every single component is computer driven, and can be updated over the air either to improve its function, or to interconnect it with other parts of the car. A simple example, if it rains, move the passenger seat backwards. Totally useless, but possible. This is how countless improvements have been introduced, like dog mode, pin to drive, sentry mode, and even basic things, like moving the seat back once you enter park. There are a lot of automakers, that have claimed, to have OTA update functionality, but they have not done much with it, and in fact, other than the infotainment screen, many can't do much with it. Neo, on the other hand, has added more than 100 new features since 2018. The reason this went unnoticed is because the brand's cars, had not yet reached markets outside of China, until now. Neo flagship ES8 vehicle is special, because this is already the version, that has been made for the European market. We have known for years that Neo, BYD, and Xpeng were getting ready to start selling their vehicles, outside of China, and might give Tesla a real run for its money. However, considering that, Neo had the smallest infotainment screen, that wasn't landscape, and an exterior that doesn't look as futuristic, as the others, other than its partnership with Intel Mobileye, and its attempts at battery swapping, we weren't certain, what Neo's vehicles had going for them. While, admittedly, we have yet to try the vehicles of Xpeng, and BYD, it now seems to us, that Neo could easily become, one of the best selling electric brands worldwide. The exterior, the steering wheel, and, the front air vent of the ES8. The beautiful headlights, and tail lights, the contours, a camera cannot accurately show, what this car is actually like. Second of all, this car has more features, and great subtle design choices, that are not apparent until you have had the time, to fully check out the car. In this video, we will discuss fully detail, all of the car's features. Performance and Handling The car has pre-made driver modes, like Comfort, Eco, and Sport, but you can also just customize it, by choosing between three steering modes. Comfort, Standard, Steady. Three Regenerative Braking Modes, Very Low, Low and Standard. And three Acceleration Speeds, from 0 to 100 km per hour in 4.9, 7.2, or 9.9 .9 seconds, which in the case of 4.9 seconds or Sport Mode, will also lower the height of the car. Because, that's right, it has air suspension. Too bad that you can't set a custom ride height. In a Tesla, when you change the height, the car will remember it, but considering that, this too is a computer on wheels, perhaps after the next update, it will, and that once again shows, how powerful this is. The buttons are big and logical, and can be operated without looking. The only superior ones, are, Tesla's ingenious scroll wheels. On the airstrip, when the car is in sport mode, it has that fantastic electric kick to it that the EV community loves. It reaches 50 km per hour, in a mere 2.1 seconds, which even beats the Model X long range is 2.3 seconds. Though, it still has a long way to go, to beat the Model X performance is 1.3 seconds. For the 0 to 100 km per hour speed, the Neo ES8, officially has a 0 to 100 km per hour time of 4.9 seconds. What this means is that on a highway, quickly taking over another car is easy. Altogether, this is very impressive, considering the weight of the car is the same as the Model X, but has a price tag, that is half of the Model X, in China. Now, with the upcoming Model X refresh, Tesla kicks the performance up a notch, but that, the ES8, which is not NIO's newest car, is in the same league, makes me seriously respect NIO, for its achievement range and not charging when it comes to the range at 500 km wltp the neo es8 also exactly matches the model x long range 
pre-refresh, but that is where the similarities end. The Model X has a peak charging rate of 225 kilowatts, whereas for the Neo ES8, this is only 90 kilowatts. Normally, this would be a downside, but in this case, that is just not the whole story. For a Model X, a full recharge from 0 to 100% takes nearly 2.5 hours, and even 20 to 80% still takes 30 minutes, but for Neo, that speed can be 3 minutes, because it doesn't have to charge, it just has a battery swap. Battery as a service will blow your mind. Buzz is what Neo calls it, and there is a lot more to this than most people have even considered. First of all, this is no longer an experiment with an uncertain outcome. Neo has already performed this party trick more than 3 million times. By the end of the year, Neo will have more than doubled the battery swap network in China to 700, and it plans to have 4,000 of these stations globally. In September in Norway, it is starting with four stations and will expand from there. What makes Boz so fantastic is that most people can get a cheaper car with the smallest battery pack and swap it for a big one right before they take a long road trip unless we are going out of town. A tiny 30 kilowatt hours pack would more than suffice for our grocery store trips, but for now, the battery sizes Neo will offer are 70 kilowatt hours and 100 kilowatt hours. The price per month for the Boz service in Norway has not yet been announced, but in China it's the equivalent of 124 for the smaller pack and 187 for the larger pack. However, buying the car without a battery means that you get a 9,000 to 16,000 discount on the car, depending on the pack size you are looking to buy. When larger packs go into rotation in the swapping stations, in the future, you will be able to take advantage of them, even with an older vehicle. Neo Pilot Sadly, Norway is probably one of the worst countries to be testing Neo Pilot. The country is full of hills and mountains, so there are hardly any straight pieces of road for you to slowly learn to feel and trust the system. Also, it's possible that the Neo Pilot system was still using the version intended for the Chinese market rather than the Norwegian one. What is actually important to understand is that, Neopilot works on the technology of Intel Mobileye, the company that is, in second place after Tesla, when it comes to autonomy. After Tesla parted ways with Mobileye, the company did not sit still. What is important is that, this is a system, that actually looks around, and thinks rather than a system, that merely combines adaptive cruise control with auto steer, and only looks at its own lane markings and the car directly in front of it. The current ES8, sadly, does not have the most up-to-date sensors, like the upcoming ET7, and is thus not going to reach level 4 autonomy. Intel Mobileye plans to use LiDAR sensors. What is important to understand about that, and this is contrary to what Elon Musk often says, is that this does not mean, that the system won't be able to reach level 4 autonomy. It can, however, mean that it is not likely to be in the same league as Tesla's robotaxis as soon. It could also result in a local maximum at any point along the way and get stuck at a level as safe as a human driver but not 200%-1000% safer than a human driver that Tesla is aiming for and that regulators might demand. All in all, after Tesla, this is still the next best thing out there and I have my fingers crossed that Intel Mobileye will surprise us in the coming years. The fact that the system will be in a fleet of vehicles, and might be able to collect data, and edge cases for Intel Mobileye, is what is very significant here, for the future of both companies. Infotainment Hardware When it comes to the hardware, powering the infotainment system, we had concerns regarding how powerful it is. Neo was kind enough to let us, in on some sensitive information about their hardware. While we can't say too much, but I can tell you that, what they have told us, has completely persuaded me that, this is not going to be a problem. Once Neo publicly shares this information, a lot of jaws will drop, and I already commend Neo for it. Alright, a little hint that they approved, Neo is going to pull a Tesla. Not literally, though, that would be fun to see as well. Infotainment Software 
when it comes to software, we were confused by Neo's initial partnership, with title and lack of alternatives like Spotify. This made us worry, that it would be a difficult task for developers, to adapt their apps to run on a Neo, and would cause Western app development for Neo to stagnate. However, it turns out that Neo OS, is actually a heavily modified version of Android. This means that app developers will have, very little trouble adapting their apps, to run on a Neo. Just like with a Tesla, this would make Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, practically obsolete. Whether something like Netflix or YouTube is coming anytime soon? Is still a question that Neo has decided, not to comment on, at this time, most likely because, they have bigger fish to fry in the meantime, or they just can't say anything about such partnerships, before they are public. Also, Neo has pointed out that, because of battery swapping, people won't need to wait for the car to charge, and thus, have less need for video game, entertainment while parked. They also pointed out that, you can always stream your music over Bluetooth. Nonetheless, there are plenty of other cases, where having these services as apps is useful. My greatest hope is that, they will introduce a web browser, that can play video. This would be great, but again is not something, Neo could confirm at this time. All the, features that make this car special. The power, button. The Neo ES8, doesn't have a power button to start the car. Just like a Tesla, this car is always on, and ready to go at a moment's notice. In Fiat 500 Electric, and the Ford Mustang Mach-E, in those cars, you first press the button to turn the screens on, and then you need to hold the brake, and press the button again to start the car. Sometimes you can turn it on in one go, and sometimes it will take three tries, and this has really gotten on nerves, especially since this is completely unnecessary, in an electric car to begin with. So, the fact that the Neo ES8 starts as simply, as a Tesla is fantastic. The gear shifter. However, the Neo ES8 has also made an improvement, that is better than Tesla's. That is the gear shifter. All Teslas, but the new Model S Plaid use stalks, that you need to press up or down. Finding the right stalk and remembering, which way to press it, is not nearly as intuitive as it could be, for a new driver. In the Neo ES8, this is simply a handle, that you can operate even if you are blindfolded. You pull it to go into drive, you push it to go into reverse, and there is a nice big button, on the side to go into park. With logically placed buttons, one can feel and remember. The one thing which is a bit backwards in the ES8 is that, to go forward, you need to pull the lever backwards, rather than push it into the direction, the car has to go in, which in my opinion would be even more intuitive. If this could be a setting in the car, Neo would make me very happy, who knows, maybe one day through an update. Front rear and 360 cameras. When going up a steep hill, and we see nothing but sky, the 360 camera shows you all. This feature, is not necessarily unique all on its own, but it is very well implemented in this car. When going in reverse, or when entering a cramped space, the cameras jump into action automatically. What is unique in the 360 view is that, lines are projected, based on how the steering wheel is turned. This shows how far you need to turn, to safely get by a cramped spot or parking space. This is something many cars have with the reverse camera, but here you also have it, with the 360 degree cameras, and can see, how the front will turn as well as the back. What is also very convenient, is the moment you switch to reverse, you see the reverse camera, and when switching to drive, it shows the front camera, HUD. The car has a HUD and it is very convenient, showing both the speed, the speed limit, and navigation directions. Steering wheel adjustment. Neo has made it so extremely easy. On the left side of the steering wheel, there is a little knob, that you can push up, down, left, and right, and the steering wheel will move accordingly. This can be done at any time. Fragrance dispenser. Under the center console, as many as three vials can be inserted, with various fragrances to make the car smell nice, something very useful in areas, with a lot of air pollution. 
A lot of people would probably think that they don't like car fresheners and won't want this, but the fact of the matter is that this is not the same thing. The best example was given by a Neil employee. Imagine you are driving by a smelly farm, and that smell has already gotten into your car. Normally, you would turn on the air recirculation and suffer for a few minutes until the smell dissipates. With the fragrances, you can fix the car smell in mere seconds and leave it on for only a few minutes, in addition to turning on air recirculation. This is something even I can get behind, even though I hate car fresheners and I'm not a fan of perfume. Selfie camera. This is a feature that so far not a single other car has. Neo has built in a high quality camera above the rear view mirror that can take pictures of all the people in the car at the same time. So far, the only thing you can do with these images is put them on a USB stick, but who knows, in the future, conference calls or uploading images to social media could be possible. Built in dash cam function. That is right, the Neo ES8 can record up to 8 hours of footage and automatically make clips of what could potentially be risky situations and also do so whenever the driver clicks the DVR button. The amount of footage stored can be increased significantly by inserting a USB or hard drive into the USB port. A big safe. The armrest portion of the center console can be locked and act as a sort of safe in the car. What makes this even better is that the center console storage space, it's 13 inches, 33 centimeters deep, 12 inches, 30 centimeters long, and 6 inches, 15.5 centimeters wide. More storage. While there is no glove box compartment, the safe makes up for that. There is also a huge space underneath the center console. It's 6,570. According to one female Neo employee, this place is perfect for a large purse. Though, the space could probably use some aftermarket storage dividers for greater convenience. This space also cannot be fully filled up because on top is where you insert the fragrance vials and likely also where the fragrance comes from. The space in all four doors is also larger than in most cars and can also fit some more stuff. Front Passenger Seat Heaven If you are a guy looking to buy a family car, your wife will love you for choosing the ES8. The front passenger seat is the most luxurious and comfortable, heating, ventilation, and massage already make it better than most, but that in itself is not unprecedented. The fact that you also get electrically controlled leg support and a foot stand is what makes this seat so unique. You can literally turn it into a bed, not unlike a first-class seat in a big airplane. The passenger seat also has a memory and can be programmed with four different custom positions, which is another feature you see less often than you might think. Finally, the seat has a very unusual function. Once you electronically slide it all the way back, you can click a button and slide the chair even further back, manually to the point that you are somewhere between the first and second row. The sunshade mirror. Women who like to put on makeup in the car will absolutely love this. Without the lights, it's 17 centimeters, 6.5 inches long, basically stretching nearly all the way across the sunshade. Some cars have rear view mirrors that are smaller than this. Neo's attention to detail is amazing. Nomi. As you may have seen before, the car has this little robot head. On the dashboard, your personal assistant called Nomi. It seemed like a gimmick that mostly people in Japan or China might like, and that it might push away serious men looking for an EV in Western countries. Now, you can apparently buy the car without it, but there is something about it that just makes it a nice addition to the car and is not nearly as distracting most people thought it would be. When addressed, it looks at you. When a passenger hasn't buckled in, it will look at that person and show an animation of the seat buckle on the screen. When you play music, it occasionally shows that it likes the music, and the animation can even adapt to the music genre. With pop or rap, it might show some cool shades. Whereas with some other music, it might shake some rattles. There are, however, 
two aspects of Nomi that have yet to be improved. One is its ability to answer, this however is, because it is still in training for the English language, and it will be a lot more ready by the time, the first ES8 as are handed over to customers in Norway. The second is the way it is activated. Right now, after saying hi Nomi, custom activation word is possible, fantastic, it takes three seconds for it to look at you, and then say Nomi is here. Only then will it properly listen. To Neo, I would suggest changing this to a simple yes. And to say it instantly, before the robot finishes turning. The fact that it said yes, and is turning is enough for me to know, it has recognized me. The fact that it is looking at me, is a nice bonus, and it will still look straight at me, for most of my query anyways. It is also possible to immediately get it to listen to you, by pressing the voice assistant button on the steering wheel, but I like the wake word more. Trunk. The trunk opens up automatically, and can close automatically, when operated by the exterior handle interior button, the infotainment screen, or the car keys. The trunk can also be opened or closed by a motion sensor. Underneath the car, you just kick the air underneath, and the trunk opens. Now on to size. With the third row of seats up, the trunk is pretty small, because this is an SUV, and not a minivan, a mere 44 centimeters, 17 in. Then with the third row down, that length becomes somewhere between 109 to 157 centimeters, 43 to 62 in, depending on how far the second row seats are placed, in the six seat configuration. Then, finally, with the second row down as well, you get 214 centimeters, 7 feet, until the center console. These measurements wouldn't be complete, without mentioning that, the height is 76 centimeters, 30 in and the width is 120 cm, 47.5 in, at the bottom and 86 cm, 34 in, at the top. By volume, that is 1903 liters with both rows down, 870 liters with the third row down, and 312 liters with all seats up. What else does the Neo ES8 have? The Neo ES8 is full of surprises. We can't guarantee that, we have discussed all the features, nor that, we have not accidentally forgotten to include something, in this video, but some more features worth mentioning are, the ES8 has a big, beautiful sunroof that opens, and can be covered up with a semi-transparent cover. The car has a HEPA filter. The climate control system can generate negative ions. The interior of the ES8 also has ambient lighting, of which you can choose the colors, though, they are not visible in daylight. The screen, what is very visible even in direct sunlight, however, is the instrument cluster. Unlike most cars, it's a screen that hasn't been covered. A lot of people might be concerned about that. Neo offers its clients a service that other automakers don't. Neo Power. If you are away from chargers and swapping stations, if you run out of power, or if you don't have time to charge, Neo will drive an electric van to you. That will charge your car, regardless of where you are. The smartphone app, allows you to summon your car, forward and backwards. Everything have some downsides, now what are the Neo ES8 downsides? Let me know in the comment box if you want to know about Neo ES8 downsides, I will make another detailed video on the downsides, because this video is all. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment below and please hit the like or share button, we'd really appreciate it.